everyone. Welcome back to NG. Uh, let me back out of this. Here we are. The house. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's see what we can find. There's a cedar plate hanging from the mud wall. Inspecting further, I see there's a single nail hammered into the middle of the board. So we can hang something there. Hmm. What do you think this is? Obviously, a frame. <laughs> Made to enhance objects that are three-dimensional. Oh, so like a mask. Frame for some kind of painting. Not necessarily a painting, but it can be used to display. It can be used to display anything. Hang it on the nail there and you're done. Hmm, feels kind of lazy to me. Well, as du Duchamp, Duchamp's fountain showed that's too much of a digression. In any case, it is a board to make something decorative. Okay. Well, we don't have anything to hang there at the moment. Shoe cabinet. Opened it, but I couldn't find... I couldn't even find a single shoe inside. I find something black and cylindrical at the corner. Bamboo charcoal. Hmm. That's one fine charcoal. Seems like Miroku was quite the hobbyist. Why would it be in a shoe cabinet, though? I look through the bottom section as well and find a can in the back. A spray can. Spray paint. Seeing that it's in an odd place like this, I assume it's just- it's not just art supplies. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Whatever floats your boat. And then there are two doors, so we can go left or right. And I always go left, so... Living room! Okay. I- you can tell from my face, I'm not wearing any makeup, I just woke up, so... <laughs> I went way too late last night editing uh, Neo. And then I slept in, and then I was like, fuck, I need to record this before I head out for the dentist. So, here we are. <laughs> it's a clock. It swings without stopping. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus. That got me. Wooden storage shelf. Try pulling on the door, but it won't open. Seems to be locked. Hmm. Maybe it's something with the clock. You think you can do this one? Turn around and ask Rosé. Monday night. Stand back. Rosé whips out some thin tools from her pocket and... Mm. Open sesame. No, no. I swallowed a hair in my haste. I'm, I'm having breakfast at the same time. It's a smoothie. Magic trick! I'm happy that I'm able to entertain you. <laughs> so what's in it? <clears throat> Sailor uniform and cute socks. Hmm. Children's clothes. Did Miruku have a family? Bun didn't mention anything about that. Okay. So, oh, another one. Jeez. He kidnapped kids or something. <clears throat> hmm. Nothing else here. Bedroom. Wait, is the house that small? This is all there is? Oh, what's that? Old bu odd bulge in the curtain. Check the curtain. Of course. What is it? Nothing's here. Huh. No sign of anything that would cause the curtain to bulge. Even things out the window look normal. It was sprinkled or something? Mmm. Okay. Oh, that's something there. Colorful flyer on the floor stands out from the eerie bedroom. Out of curiosity, I pick it up. Hmm. Kishoji. Ballet school. 1999. Kishoji Center Hall starts at 1. Doors close at 1.30. Girl dressed in white in a ballet pose with her legs raised high. Flyer for children's ballet recital. Wait, is he the pedophile or something? Children's ballet, you say. Atmosphere of this place is more suited towards Japanese buto. We find children's clothing. Any any goes to children ballet performances. This is shady. First act, collection of pieces, ballet, other. Second act, lac de, lac de ca, ca, oh, I can't read that. Second act will feature girls who are too young to wear point, point shoes. Please endure their energy and spirit as they perform adorned in adorable clo colors. 
What's the stuff written for the second act? Is it Latin? French. Je suis dés désolé, but that's actually French. Duck Lake. Ah. Is it Khan, then, maybe? Judging from the name, it must be adapted from Swan Lake. They probably make a little ingenious. Uh, be ducks. I can't read all of this instead of swans and dance about it. Seems like a show designed to showcase their energy as opposed to grace. Ducks sound like ducks sounds a lot le less impressive than swans. You think so? That stubby body, those adorable orange beaks and feet, and the way they shoot through the water. Ducks are far cuter than swans. If I were to receive a gift, I would prefer ducks over swans. No one's going to buy you either of those. <laughs> Take the flyer just in case. Hmm. High class western style bed. Take a look around it. Find something that looks like a mass of hair under the bed. A clump of stiff hair. Oh, like a wigs? Horse hair. Oh. Commonly be used for something like the bowstrings for a violin. How can you tell? I learned how to play a number of instruments in the past. Perhaps I may not look the part, but I was born into a pretty wealthy family. I have a good foundation of knowledge concerning most high culture, including music. Why don't you take it with you? It might, be, might prove useful later on. <clears throat> a boom box. Pretty old one. A drawer on a table the boom box is sitting on top of. Open the drawer. Sticks of incense neatly put away. Cool. In the corner, I see a square metal box sitting there. What's this? Battery. Ah, oh, sorry. It's been quite a while since I've seen one of those. Oh, you know what it is? A battery. Pretty old type at that. Hmm. What does it go into then? How old are you? I'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> Can we inspect the boombox as well? Cassette tape inside. Eject the tape and take a look. A single letter written on the label, T. What a creepy tape. Would you mind playing it? I'm curious what's recorded on it. Sure. Hit the play button. Hmm. Seems like no matter how many times I press it, it's not going to play anything. Maybe it needs the battery. Empty, yeah. Doesn't have any batteries. Of course it doesn't work. Well. I just happened to pick one up. And the battery types were thankfully the same, so it fits without any issues. <clears throat> Alright, how about now? You're kidding me, useless pizza. I think about using the flashlight's batteries, but I realize they won't fit. Perhaps there's not much battery life left. Rubbing it or warming it up will put some charge back into it. Oh, really? Um, how do I do that? Let me check the bed first. Digging under the pillow, I immediately feel something. Okina mask. Oh, we're gonna put that on the wall. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's one sturdy bed. I wonder what caused these stains. Now that I'm looking, there are more spots than I expected. Ugh. Can we rub the battery? Oh, no, not the mask. I assume the battery would be... Hmm. The battery's gone. Still can't play the tape. I heard... Batteries can get some life back if they get warmed up. Hmm. Okay. How do you want to do that, though? Take out the mask and set it on the frame, but nothing seems to change. Hmm. I see there's a single nail. Nail for hanging things. Hmm. So we're not leaving the mask on there. Sorry, I need to consume my breakfast. <clears throat> I'm looking at a Japanese guide and I might have missed something here in the couch. I didn't see that before. Checking around the sofa near the bottom. Hmm. Hand warmer. Okay. I can use this, uh, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming we can somehow use that with the battery, but... 
um, a Kaido hand warmer. The Japanese thinks that Kaido is like a. It's like one of those bags that you like rub and then it like heats up and then you can put it in your pocket to warm your hands. A lot of Japanese people use that in winter. Um, let's see, hand warmer. Warming it up. Use the hand warmer. I have this. I open the bag, crumple it, and place it on the battery compartment on the back of the boombox. Hmm. We just need to warm the thing up, right? Once the battery felt warm enough, I tried pressing the play button again. Oh, okay, there it stops. Victim of the kidnapping. Recording of the kidnapped girl report. They refer to the victim as Child T, age 13, long hair, wearing a white one-piece dress on the day she was missing. She was last seen heading from home from a ballet class practice in Kisoji. Oh no, did he kidnap her? The report mentions that it's been a month and the case is now a partial public investigation. From that point, the newscaster just rehashes information about the incident and once the news moves on to the no next topic for the day, the recording cuts off. So he's following the news on it. Rosé ejects the tape and sighs. Hence the tea label. The owner of this house seems quite intriguing. It's crazy no matter how you look at it. Why make a recording of the news about a kidnapping incident? Ballet. It's coming up too much to be a coincidence. Hmm. He's fucking shady, man. Okay. Oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Where's the phone? Intriguing, let's answer it. But I guess we'll look for it. Yeah, where is the phone? We didn't see a phone anywhere. Oh, there. Was it there before? Black phone on top of the storage shelf. Jeez, so loud. Pick it up. I don't remember every detail of this room, but it definitely felt off. Phone wasn't here when we came through the living room earlier, right? Yeah, I didn't notice it. What's going on here? We're in this house to answer that question, are we not? Someone or something wants us to answer the phone, so why don't you take the call? Make it stop! Ugh. Ugh. Hello? 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 Phone suddenly goes dead. Well, what's the point of calling me then? Jeez. Hmm. Dizziness. I violently, violently hang up the phone. When I come to my senses, I notice that my hand is covered in sweat. What the hell was that? Who was calling? I don't know. The person hung up immediately. How boring. You look rather pale. Something the matter? Nothing. And another call! Wait, is it from the same? It's me. Almost time for the patrol to show up. Let's wrap it up for today. Oh shit, really? Hmm. Let's head back out. Time to go, I guess. We get out of the mansion without any major issues. We rejoin the one who was keeping watch and quickly share the info we gained in our search. <clears throat> I told you, aren't we? Aren't you glad we went inside? That tea tape in particular was quite a find. Combined with that ballet flyer, it has some grave implications. <laughs> Why do you look like you're enjoying this? If that's what we found in one, on day one, I shudder to think what we're going to end, where, where this is going to end up. Quit your whining. Just admit it's been a worthwhile night. Worthwhile night. I can't read today. Ah! We've even heard the rumored scream. Yeah, that, that, that was it just now, my scream. <laughs> it must be a spirit, probably the screaming author's doing. <clears throat> the spirit's all that remains of Yakumo Miroku, or is it some someone else entirely? I can't wait to find out. It's only a matter of time before the cops show. We better split up. We'll meet back at the Black Rabbit at the same time tomorrow night. Yeah, sounds good to me. Doesn't... My aunt think this is super shady that I keep meeting up with people every day. Uh, don't forget to buy batteries. I'll try anything once, but I'm not doing that again. What a pain in the ass. Wait, just for the radio? 
We part in front of the Midoku residence and take our own separate paths to the station. Isn't it easier to just bring, like, a tape player or something? As I walk by myself down the street, I think about what I heard on the tea tape. That might be just be the crazy tip of the psycho iceberg of stuff hidden in the Midoku residence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I catch my train, and by the time I get back to Gisoji Station, it's already past midnight. Better go home and get some rest. That is late, dude. Oh, God. Oh, no. Hardly everyone ever uses that photo booth. I immediately saw it. Coin operated photo ID booth. I haven't saved, though. Uh. Who is it? No one's behind the curtain! <gasps> Could have sworn someone was there, but I just... Am I just seeing things? Fuck. Dude, save. Uh, here. Just run. Just get out of here. Is it D-Man? Hmm. Search the monster that raises its voice when when awoken. Dude, I'm so bad at these. I haven't found any of them. I wonder if it matters whether I find these or not. Again, I have no idea what he wants me to do. <coughs> yes, let's go home. I ignored D-Man's text and instead head straight home. I, yeah. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? Snuck in Midoka's place, searched until cops came on patrol, found frames to put objects in, found a cassette tape, the tea report. The little girl went missing on the way back from ballet lessons, horsetail hair, often used for instruments. Hmm. I'm tired. Well, let's go to bed then. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong button. Wash my face before going to bed. You want to wash your face or take a shower? Do different things. It's funny that it makes you do that instead of just being like, the text just being like, took a shower and I'm going to bed. Next door, movie, maybe a video game? That's loud. The noise won't stop, my temper's hanging by a thread. Punching the wall. Uh, just wait a little. Don't really want to start a fight. The noise shows no sign of stopping. I can't take this any longer. Finally stopped. Maybe I'll water the plants. Your plants? This little cactus? You don't have any plans. Do you have plans on the balcony? <coughs> no. Nothing in particular. Go to bed, dude. Gotta water the plant. Well, where do you... Do you get water here? No? Oh, the kitchen just counts as water. I water the plant. Do you have to though? Do you water cacti? cacti? I don't know anything about plants. So. Like anything. I've never had plants. They always, well, whenever someone gave me a plant, it would just die. Because I either watered it too much or too little or it's complicated. Hmm. 
Why do you even still have a phone like that? Doesn't seem to want to stop ringing, so I reach for the phone. <coughs> it's followed you, dude. The other end of the line is silent. All I hear is breathing. What the hell? What do you think you're doing? Oh, there she is. Chills run down my spine and my body involunta involuntarily jerks and slams the receiver down. That voice sounded familiar. Someone pranking me? Or... They'll probably try to call again. I'll just lie in bed and wait. Dude, I would pull the plug. Room is quiet and it doesn't seem like it's an like anything's going to happen. I must be tired after all. My consciousness slowly fades. Luckily, I'm not bothered by another phone call. Next day, I wake to an oppressive heat. I drag my listless body outside and trudge to electronic shops in search of batteries. Since this is an older one, I'm not having much luck finding what I need. By the time I get what I set out for, the sun has already set. Jesus, spent hours looking for batteries? Why are the lights in my room on? Oh, it must be Seiji. I'm sure I shut them off when I left. Ten bucks on Seiji. Faint sounds from the hearing. I can hear faint sounds from the other side of the door. Something's definitely inside. It must be. That's me. Kind of doubt it, but it could be. I still think it's just Seiji looking for the gun, maybe? I grab the doorknob and slowly turn it. No resistance, it's unlocked. I breathe in and cautiously crack the door open. Hey, welcome back. Ah, it is her. I let myself in. What are you doing in my apartment? <clears throat> I wanted to talk with you before we headed to the Black Rabbit. So you picked my lock? Yeah. Waiting outside would have been so boring. Does it bother you? A little. You look upset. Do you not know how to handle women? Dude, you broke into my apartment. <laughs> so what do you want to talk about? I'm sure you've heard all about me from Bun, so I don't don't see what else you want to know. I've heard about the underground matches, Ami's abduction, and Kubitaro's case, too. There was something I needed to hear, and I needed to hear it directly from your mouth. Bloodmetry, that strange power you claim to have. Do you know something about it? Yes, though it's just a hypothesis. That's better than me. I don't know the first thing about it. I suppose if I'm to be your teacher, I can't really turn down such a sincere request. That mysterious power of yours is an extension of your intuition. You might know it better as your sixth sense, a little something that warns you of danger. You're saying it's like, my instincts? <clears throat> you call it that too. You could call it that too. Everyone possesses it to some extent. However, your sixth sense is unusually keen. It's probably why you never lost any of those underground matches. Of course, you also had the physical abilities and reflexes to react to the danger you sensed. I can kind of get a sense for what she's saying. When I focused during a fight, I just become so much more aware of my surroundings. That's gotta be that sixth sense. But the true value of your sixth sense isn't limited to that. Animals are fascinating, you know. Abilities that aren't necessary for survival are pruned. Wait, that are necessary or aren't? On the other extreme, they can awaken new abilities if they need them to survive. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The day Ami disappeared, I met Kakia. I knew that my life was in grave danger. You're saying that meeting that meeting woke my sixth sense, this blotmetry power? <clears throat> Precisely. You're an excellent disciple. But not every person gains some great new power when they face imminent danger. I believe in your case that you're likely already possessed that ability. Perhaps a parent or ancestor of yours had spiritual powers. Don't ask me. My mother was just a normal woman. She didn't have any weird powers. That you know of. What about your father? I don't even know what the guy looks like. All I know is that he abandoned my mom. I see. I apologize if I upset you. Maybe it's the dad then. Nah, I don't care. Anyway, uh, you sure know a lot about the spirit world and all that. I must say, it's nice to have a disciple who views my skills with such, with such respect. But all of my friends know everything we've just discussed. It's common knowledge. 
Whoa, what kind of friends are those? You got a group of supernatural fanatics or something? A certain sponsor has hired me to investigate spirits and supernatural activities. And Bun's helping me with that. A group that investigates spirits. Sounds like something from a comic book. So who's the sponsor of yours? The head of a distinguished family you've heard of. He has some strange abilities himself. Oh, is it the dude from Deathmark? He uses a peculiar way of thinking to solve supernatural cases most people wouldn't consider. Like defending a spirit's... Ah, yeah! Attack with a plastic sheet and broken umbrella. It's quite reckless. What the hell kind of idiot is that? He looks like your basic, sullen, middle-aged man. It goes without saying that he's not my type. He's currently on an overseas business trip with a friend. Aw, we're not gonna meet him. <clears throat> Which is why I have to... Trips around investigating cases now. Although, thanks to that situation, I was able to meet a wonderful young man like you. Well then, it's about time. We should get going. So it's the- oh gosh, he works for the dude of Deathmark. The main character. By the way, Gabu. Do you happen to know if anyone's committed suicide in the apartment before? The one I live at? How should I know? Why don't you just ask that out of the blue? There's an extremely ominous presence in the apartment. I didn't want to worry you, so I was, wasn't going to mention it, but I changed my mind. Have you experienced any unusual phenomena here? A bunch of weird things have happened. I almost died once, too. And yet you seem pretty unfazed. Well, obviously I didn't die. <laughs> so much strange stuff has been happening lately, I might just be getting used to it. <clears throat> You're a pretty carefree kid. I sense a power in the apartment that draws spiritual beings to it. Hmm. Like a famous suicide spot or a haunted area. Maybe Kakia planted something in my apartment. Well, thanks. I feel all warm and fuzzy now. So what am I supposed to do? Without knowing what's causing it, it's hard to recommend an effective approach. Moving out would be the easiest solution. I really don't have time for that. And anyway, I'm not some weakling that's gonna move just because of some stupid ghost. I figured you'd say that. It's your life. Do whatever you like. But if it starts getting on your nerves, just come talk to me. <coughs> uh, oh. When we arrive at the Black Rabbit, the lights are on. Is uh, Bun here? Oh, yes. Natsumi! Uh, Natsumi is there and she looks exhausted. I wasn't expecting to see you here. I won't be here long though. I have to meet with a new detective. Her eyes are completely lifeless. Although that's to be expected. For two weeks now, she's been doing anything and everything she can think of to find Ami. Police, detective, fl detectives, flyers, the internet, none of it has helped. Would it help if I told her that Ami is alive, but being held hostage somewhere? Even if I did tell her that, there still wasn't anything she'd be able to do about it. Worse, if she gets involved, she could end up dying just like Maruhashi. <coughs> Despite that, should I still tell her what I know about Ami's situation? Oh, fuck. I feel like she could be useful, though. Because she knows so much about the occult being a horror writer, and she, she's done research and stuff on things. She could be helpful. Maybe it runs in the family as well, something my parents did. Sorry, Gabu. I have an appointment with a detective. We'll talk about- we'll talk some other time. God damn it! I wanted to tell her. Natsumi quickly leaves. <clears throat> After a bit, Rose, who was waiting outside, comes in. Was that your aunt? She seems so distraught. It was painful to even look at her. And there's Ban. Sorry I'm late. Mahjong game got intense at the end. What's the matter? What's got you two looking so serious? You're the most incorrigible, thick-headed man I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. You're beyond all hope. Death would be a kindness to you. Jesus, lady! What the heck are you so mad about? I don't have the energy to explain it to you. How's your investigation going? Don't you dare tell me that it slipped your mind and you wasted all your time playing Mahjong. Don't be ridiculous. I'm a consummate professional. Here's all the info I've found so far. He didn't have any friends or close relatives, so I wasn't able to get much. But I grilled Miroku's publisher and paid off. I finally got my hands on this. So he originally wanted to be a doctor, did he? Changing career paths from doctor to an author is quite a drastic life change. 
The reason he did so is a mystery. Apparently he didn't talk about himself much. But it's doubtful that cash was the reason. The Midoko family is extremely well off. <coughs> That's evident just based on that mansion. A poor author wouldn't be able to live like that. Apparently, his publisher never once set foot in that house either. Seems like Miroku hated everyone, intru anyone intruding on his private life. So basically, if we are to learn about his private life, our only option is to rummage through that mansion. That's right. I also looked into what was recorded on that tea tape. The girl disappeared half a year ago. She was last seen at the intersection about a five minute stroll from the Miroku residence. Shit. So that's why there are irregular patrols around that area. But if that happened half a year ago, why are they still maintaining that patrol route? As it turns out, a number of other girls have disappeared around that area too. They're ancient cases though, so I didn't have time to dig into them. That concludes my report. Good work! Well then, should we head straight to the Midoku residence? We must unveil the truth that lurks within the darkness. Okay. We go our separate ways at Kisoji Station, just like yesterday, and each get on the train. <coughs> Born 1944, age 55, unmarried. Hometown of Tokyo, surgical intern at after graduation. Oh, he was an intern already. Sudden debut as new popular author at the age of 27. 1979, he released a Dark Fairy Tales kids horror book collection, became a bestseller and becomes famous as a horror author. His last work, Old Bamboo Cutter's Dream. It was about Princess Kaguya. Huh. Hmm. Okay. I reached the Midoku residence without any particular trouble today. <coughs> Another wonderful night. I feel like we'll make great progress with our investigation. You got here fast today. Well, I learned after my trip here yesterday. Anyway, same plans yesterday? Yeah, you and someone else go investigate. The other one stays behind to keep watch. Sounds alright with you? Yeah, that's fine. Let's take Bun this time. If there is a flaw to this plan, Bun looks toward the Midoku residence. It might be the fact that we already explored most of the mansion yesterday. We, re we already checked the hallway, living room, and the bedroom. There were no other rooms. Hang on a second. From the outside, the mansion looks like it would have a second floor or at least an attic. But from what we saw yesterday, we didn't find stairs anywhere, right? Wait a moment. It doesn't necessarily have to be stairs, right? Maybe there's a ladder hidden somewhere. Rose makes a good point. I missed those details on my first day of investigation. Let's take one more look around the rooms. <coughs> That's all we can do. Just have to use our feet, eyes, and hands. Time's a-wastin'. Let's get this started. Alright. So, let's take Bun today. Alright, Reze, you be on lookout. Monday night. Monday night. Leave it to me. Makase toke. I'll, I'll see you both later. Alright, let's go. Oh, oh, look at those legs. Is that post box anything? No card? Okay. Nice dress, lady. <laughs> Text? I really hope I'm not getting into trouble for not finding the D cards. I hope that's just collectibles. Repeatedly hurry the movement of the monster that moves without rest. What? The clock? Look at that later. Investigation takes priority. I know, I'm coming. So we need to check the ceiling for something? Another phone call. Oh! There's something on the table now. Don't surprise me like that. I should check it out just in case. Check out the phone. Take the handset and put it to my ear, but I don't hear anything. Is the line connected? Turn on the flashlight and follow the telephone line coming from behind the shelf. Hmm? I notice that something's stuck in between the storage shelf and the wall. I try wedging my hand in, but the crevice is too small and I can't reach it. Find something? Something's stuck between the shelf and the wall. Space is so tight my hand can't reach inside. Let's move the shelf. <coughs> okay, let's move it. Uh... 
let's move it. Do we need anything to move it? Can we just use it with our hands? Oh, move it there. I'll give you a hand. Ban and I go to the sides of the storage shelf and... Let's do this. Now! <laughs> with his call, I pick up the shelf. Perhaps the wood is dense because the thing is far heavier than it looks. Heavier than I thought. That's what you get with antiques. We just need to move it a little bit. Don't hurt yourself, old man. Not a senior citizen, damn it. <laughs> Here it goes. We move it a step or two and set it back down. I almost threw out my hip there. <laughs> you are a senior citizen. It was on the floor. What do you think it was? Quit playing around and show it to me. I light up the object with a flashlight and show him. A cassette tape labeled H. Okay. <clears throat> Looks like it was worth putting my hip at risk. Wonder what's recorded on this tape. Find out in a bit. I have batteries. Now why is this here? A rotten basket. The fruits and fruits inside are all black. The fruits inside the basket are all so old they turned completely black. They're completely dried up. I pluck one fruit off of what seems to be a bunch of bananas. Oh, it's bananas! Dried up fruit. Oh, you took it with you? Well. Okay. Um, let's go play the tape. <coughs> oh, that's right. I remember that I bought the replacement battery. Take the new battery from my pocket and swap the batteries. You're prepared. We shouldn't have any problems playing the tape now. Okay. Let's play tape H. Press the play button. No sound comes out of the speakers. You sure the battery is good? The tape is spinning just fine. Maybe it just hasn't gotten to the part where there's sound. Suddenly the phone from the next room rings. What the heck is going on? Are we supposed to answer the phone? But the tape is still spinning inside the boombox. Let's go take a look. Damn. I'm gonna save this. Oh, the sound is so fucking loud. Stop ringing. That would drive me insane. <clears throat> Summon up some courage, take the handset and put it to my ear. Radio noise. Oh, that's cool. I hear something that sounds familiar when to when tapes are played back. I listen to the headset just hoping to hear something else. Girl's voice. Kill me already. Jesus. I almost fling the handset away in response to the scream that pierced my ear. What happened? Am I right? It's nothing. I can't afford to miss any of it. I immediately return the handset to my ear once again. Ah, no voice this time. It hurts so much. Please just end it. Just kill me already. The hell is this? I hear a girl's voice pleading desperately. From further away, I hear the murmur of an old man. I want to try and keep you alive, but that might be impossible with all four limbs cut off. What? Was he dismembering girls? The phone ended with the man's statement. It ended. Judging by your expression, I'm not sure if I want to hear what you heard, but I guess I have to. Tell me what it was. All right. I described the girl's scream and the voice of the man who apologized. If what he said about cutting off all four limbs is literal and is true, then this is a recording of something truly terrible. The entire time I heard a sound that sounded like tape noise. I couldn't hear it directly, but I think it was what re what's recorded on the H tape. All four limbs cut off, huh? What the hell is this guy thinking, apologizing when he's the one doing it? Sounds like the logic of a psycho. There's no point in thinking about it. We're trying to figure out why he became a psycho. Jesus. Shit's intense. <clears throat> what do I do now, though? <gasps> <laughs> 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 
What the hell? I can't contain my shock as my flashlight lights up an object on the ground. I gather myself and look at it again. Is this a doll? The object sitting on the bed seems to be a little girl doll. I'm no doll expert, but I can tell that it's more sloppily made than the Kakia one. Its clothes are dirty and there are a couple of reddish black stains on it. Oh, touch the blood! It's wearing a weird mask. What the hell is this mask supposed to be? It has a beak, so is it a bird? Who cares? Let's check it out. Oh, shit. There's a reddish black stain on the doll's clothing. This might be a blood stain. Looks like blood. Maybe I'll give it a try. I let out a breath to relax and press my fingertip to the blood. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> I hear a sniffling, crying sound. Along with it, I begin to hear a quiet voice. <sighs> Famished? So she was starving in the attic? Something wrong? I'm alright. I heard a voice. The voice is saying famished. What kind of name is famish? That's a serious question. I mean, I'm saying that I have no idea what they mean by famished. Oh, that's what you mean. Well, the word famished means hungry. That's the first time I've ever heard it. Is it from a weird dialect? Let's just leave this for another time. It's a waste of time explaining it. It's strange that a doll would be hungry, but that's what it sounds like it's saying. Do you want the banana? The mask makes a sound and then... The mask falls on the doll's lap. Ah, oh, I got the fruit. Okay, used up the fruit and obtained the fa the mask, pheasant mask. God, that's creepy though. Should we hang the mask in the middle? I place the pheasant mask on the frame. Looks pretty all right. Maybe it was hung up here. Just then I hear something move in the hallway. What's going on? I quickly remove the mask, but the shaking won't stop. Hey, look! <gasps> it's a door! Eventually the vibrating stops. The hallway entrance appears to, uh, at the mutt wall in front of me. Oh, shit! That's awesome! Is this a ninja lair or something? This is the first time I've seen an actual real trapdoor. Looks like we saw a glimpse of the true face of the owner of this place. What are you talking about? There's only one type of person who would build something like this. A paranoid person. Someone who is possessed by something. Possessed? By what? That's the million dollar question, kid. Come on, time to see what this hidden passage lead leads. Fuck, dude. Gotta save. Okay, let's go. Oh, ho -ho! so exciting! We make our way down the extremely narrow path from the hidden entrance. It's really cramped. It doesn't look that narrow. There are rooms on both sides. This path probably goes between the two rooms. Ah, oh, that's so cool! At the end of the path, there's another door. It looks like this is our only option. Let's see where this leads. I hear something walking on the roof. Well, <clears throat> beyond that door, I'm shocked to be looking at the front entrance of the Midoka residence. What? How? Wait a second. Is this really possible? Huh? I don't believe it either, but it's actually happening. Hold on a second. Keep calm. Chill out and take a look around. What I notice next is that the secret door... I thought we opened earlier is now closed. Everything else seems to be the same. Why is the entrance to the secret passage closed again? I don't have a damn clue. I'm positive that we entered the secret passageway and opened the door. Did something happened the moment we went through? That thought gives me an idea. We entered the door from the we entered from the door located at the front entrance, right? So what happens if we try to leave? Like doing the opposite of what we just did? Yeah, if we end up back at the secret passage by doing that. I really did not want to think about it, but... Doesn't it seem like we'd be stuck here? That's bad. Let's try going outside. 
I rush to open the door and once going outside, I see the unchanged Midoku residence once again. Whew, that's a relief. You scared me there for a second. Rose, our lookout, looks at the two of us with a confused expression on her face. You two certainly look like you're having fun. Did something happen? Yeah, you see. I retell what happened when we went through the pa secret passageway. Really, I can't believe it, but it must be true if you're saying it. Piecing all the information together, it seems that when you enter the secret passage, you enter a different Midoku residence. It's a dream! Like in uh, Shikioku. A different Miroku residence? How is it different? I'm not sure. It could be in a different time, situation, just some specific state. We travel to a Miroku residence in a different state by entering that door, is what I mean. If we had to come up with an explanation, that's the hypothesis that makes the most sense. Assuming that you're correct, how is that even possible? There are some extremely powerful curses and thoughts that sometimes cause phenomena like this. Stairs that take you to the same floor, or an intersection that leads to the same place. These are examples I've heard from someone who actually experienced, experienced them firsthand. I don't believe that at all. But I guess I have to, since it's actually happening. If we're experiencing this phenomenon, then it means there, that there are great dangers ahead. Are you going to continue investigating? I'm fully prepared to face these dangers. I've gotten through it up until now. This is nothing. Attaboy. That's the one thing I, about you that I like. Alright, let, then let's continue our investigation. Okay, let's save again. And then go back in, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm getting... Oh, I kind of have to leave. My dentist appointment is in like 20 minutes. Um, should we just put the mask on again? And then maybe try and walk backwards. <coughs> the secret door is not going to open. Hmm. Nothing changes when I do the other mask. Well, shit. I was gonna go through it. Oh, I hear something from the back. The boombox. Button being pressed once again and the noise from the tape stops. Does it have to be playing? Taking a look, I see that there's a cassette tape in it. I eject it and notice that it's labeled A. Again? We have no choice but to listen. I rewind the tape and press play. Immediately a shuddering voice echoed. <laughs> my legs, my arms. More screaming. Girl screaming fills the room and then it finally goes quiet. I really can't read today. We hear silence for a bit and then... Soka. Soka. Don't worry, it's just your legs. I'm knowledgeable in treatment as well, but now... The man's calm voice is cut off by the tape stopping. Double check to make sure the tape's done and eject it. Shit, dude. What the fuck is he doing with these girls? Just listening to it makes me sick. Yeah, seriously. The screams were buried in my ear. Why are just your legs and knowledgeable in the fields of treatment important? Thinking about it, the owner of the mansion, Yakumo Miroku, was expi aspiring to be a surgeon. Is the male voice on the tape Miroku? I look over and notice that there is another cassette next to the boombox. Tape H. Wait, that's the one that we found, wasn't it? Maybe I'll hang on to it. Okay. Um, I'll go back for a bit, check the living room, see if anything changed there. Oh! Oh! A doll again. I know this doll wasn't here before. I'm starting to be convinced of Rose's theory about the other Miroko residents. Taking a look at the clothes it's wearing, I can see a light stain on the abdomen. Here we go. I slowly breathe out and bring my fingertip closer to the stain on the clothes. I'm hearing what sounds like crying again, and from afar a girl's voice saying, Fuck. 
cold. Did she, I mean, this doll, say that? Yeah, I heard it clearly this time. Cold, mom. If only there was a climate control in here. Like, we'd get that lucky. If there's no solution here, I guess we we'll just have to carry this somewhere. Carry the doll? Um... Yeah, we don't really have anything... Oh, socks. Take out the socks. Uh. I mean... Oh wait, no. It took off her legs, didn't it? <laughs> Fucking cruel. <laughs> Are you cold? Here, here are some socks. Oh, ooh, no legs. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. We don't have the Kaido anymore. The hand warmer. Incense, mask, mask, tapes. Hmm. What else could warm her up? Hair? Incense? I'm just trying everything now. Apparently we need Rose with us. Rosé. <coughs> to warm her up. I don't know why, but we'll find out. You're on the lookout, Ben. Let's get going. Aw, oh, his outfit's so cool. Okay, can we... So, I looked it up because I'm really pressed for time and I do want to have a little bit more... Carry the doll. There we go. I want to have a little bit more progress happening. So, here we go. Guess I'll do it. Here we go. Steady myself and carry the doll. Feels heavier than an actual child. Careful, dolls won't help you lift them. It'll probably feel heavier than a child. Oh shit! Makes sense. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. Alright, now the question is, where should I carry it to? Bedroom. Just tuck it in. Maybe it'll be warmer then. <coughs> Entering the bedroom, my eyes immediately search towards the bed. Those blankets are obviously high quality. I'm sure she won't be cold in that. There it is. I'll lay it down on the bed in the back. You move the blanket aside. As you wish. Here you go. I laid the doll in the sheets and placed the duvet over it. Ugh. Let's see how she feels. She shouldn't feel cold anymore. Let me ask her again. Put my fingertips under the blanket. I heard a crying voice again. And then, and that voice. Still cold? It's no use. She's saying the same thing. Oh, wait. I realized that I was overlooking something important. Mom. Huh? I think she wants a mother. Well, don't look at me. You're closer than I am, right? Well, the doll definitely isn't satisfied. Now, what should we do? Yeah, just have her go to the doll and be like, Yossi, Yossi. Um, ah, fuck, I want to try it, but I'm really strapped for time. <clears throat> the doll seems to want a mother. Hey, Rosé. Sorry, but can you handle this? Hmm. Rosé grimaces. I have an image to uphold. Sorry, but we really don't have the time to care about things like that right now. Fine, but only because you're my disciple. <laughs> I know I'm the one asking you to do this, but what are we supposed to do here? Essentially, we need the doll to feel some motherly warmth. Oh, is she gonna crawl into bed with her? I think an imitation of breastfeeding would be best. Seriously? You're going to... I'm not going to actually feed it. I'll just sleep next to it and lull it to sleep, just like mothers do. Here, like this. Slipping under the blankets next to the doll, Rosé speaks to it as she rubs its head. You must have been so scared. It's all right now. Mom's here with you. There's nothing to worry about anymore. The scary dream is over now. Hush now. Go to sleep. I hear a clack from the mask. Hey, Gabu. Rose crawls out of the blanket. She's holding on to the dark mask. It just came off on its own. Maybe this means that the doll has been released from her thoughts. Now that she mentions it, I remember the mask coming off on its own when I gave the doll fruit. Yeah, maybe. 
Oh, and there's this as well. A hand towel. It was wrapped around the doll's mouth. I assumed it must have been used as a gag. Oh, damn. The screams I heard on the tape replayed themselves in my head. I pick up the doll from the bed. Rosé helps me and we put it back in the living room where it was originally. Creepy. Okay, now I feel like I have done enough to warrant an episode. Um, I hope you guys like it and <clears throat> of course I'm always eager to play more of this but sometimes it's just hard to find the time and um, or there's so many games happening right now it'll just have to like be woven in between other episodes so thank you so much everyone for being so patient and i'll see you soon with another hour of ng and thank you so much for watching until the end thank you bye bye